Right now on Face the State, it was one of the worst aviation disasters in Connecticut history. The crash of a vintage B-17 bomber at Bradley Airport. How was the state's response? And are these antique planes safe to fly? Plus, Triple E impacting Connecticut. And tolls and taxes. What are lawmakers thinking for 2020? We'll talk with State Senators Norm Needleman and Paul Formica. Also, why do folks in some parts of Connecticut live longer than others? Stunning new findings from Connecticut Magazine's Eric Offgang. It's all straight ahead this Sunday, October 6th, 2019. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. Good morning, everyone. It's 830. I'm Dennis House. Thanks for joining us for Face the State. Investigators continue to try to determine how a routine flight on an ancient plane turned catastrophic. The deadly crash of a B-17 bomber on Wednesday is raising many questions. With us here today, State Senator Heather Summers, who was on that very plane just last month. And Senator, Senator Summers, good to see her in the program. Good again. morning. How are you? I'm well. So you flew this plane on September 11th. Tell us how that all came to be. Yes. Well, um, I had the, the privilege of taking a ride on the B-17 that was located in Groton at the Groton New London Airport. It was a present for my father who's in his 80s. Um, he was a young boy during World War II, always fascinated with planes. His brother flew a plane, so we took him up for a ride as an early birthday present um, on September 11th in the morning. What was that flight like? It's, it's about 30 minutes to an hour? Correct? It was about 30 minutes. It was um, really a unique experience of really having a moment in time where you could experience history. You, you sat um, where our pre Previous soldiers sat. Um, you got to tour throughout the plane as soon as it took off. You could walk around and unbuckle yourself. It was amazing. It flew to Quonset Point, Rhode Island and back. It was about a 25, 30 minute flight. Very loud, very noisy. Um, we were warned to not touch any electrical uh, cables that were there or not to go to the back of the plane because you'd fall right out. Um, and it wasn't easy to get in. You had to actually hoist yourself up to get into the plane. And also getting out, there was no steps that you get down. You have to lift yourself up to get out of the plane. But it was an experience I'll never forget. Did you ever feel unsafe or perhaps a little frightened as it took off? I did not. Um, but I may be a little bit more of a thrill seeker than, than most. There was one part where you could actually climb up and put your head outside of the plane, which I did, and tried to film it. Um, it was an amazing view. The pilots were very you know, jovial but confident. They had been touring. They go every two years. Um, the Collins Foundation really was very um, specific in uh, their instructions and also the history. They gave you the history of the planes before you got on. And the plane I was on, I think, did 18 tours over Berlin. And it was our response to uh, the Germans bombing London. And as I understand, when you got there, you actually saw the pilots or the mechanics looking at a flight manual because the plane had some mechanical problems. No, we were told uh, the day before people had gone, obviously, to the airport. And um, that particular plane had not flown on Sunday because it had some mechanical problems. And that was not something I ever really thought about uh, before getting on a Monday morning um, that you know, there was people there with a manual looking on how to fix things. Um, we were told it had a potential oil leak, but that is not uncommon in those planes because there are between nine and 13 cylinder engines, which are notoriously for uh, leaking oil. So it was not flown on Sunday um, from what we were told Monday morning. Um, and we were originally scheduled to go on a B-24. When we got there, the pilot had not made it down to be able to fly the plane. So they uh, rebooked us on the B-17. When you heard the news, on Wednesday that this plane had crashed at Bradley Airport. What went through your mind? The first thing that went through my mind was, oh my gosh, this was something that to me was so special to give to my father, a, a piece of history. You, you, we learned about what the soldiers had done. Some of these men were on that plane for eight hours before they actually got to their mission. You saw the working desk where people sat and strategized um, on how to end World War II. And you realize the fragility of life, obviously, in a second. You know, it's not something that you uh, think about when you're going up. This is an exciting adventure. Um, I was heartbroken. Obviously, my heart breaks for the families. I want to thank all the first responders for their, you know, heroic effort to save as many people as could be saved. Um, 
for the pilots, the pilots that I met, I'm not sure if it was the same one who was flying our plane, but they were so dedicated to preserving this piece of history and to be able to share it with the world on what the Americans had done for this, you know, for the world and changing the world. And they cared for the planes. It had special marks on it for each mission that it had taken. Um, so it's just heartbreaking, devastating. And I want the families in this tragedy to know that I've heard from all over, the state of Connecticut is mourning with you and we have you in our thoughts and we will be here for you in the, in the coming months and years to come. There are other B-17s around the country available for these tours. If mm -hmm. one should come to Connecticut again, do you think there should be any changes made in how they're examined or how they're checked out? Well, I think we have to wait to see what the investigation um, that is ongoing, that I, you know, will take months, what the um, investigators find in this case. Um, talking to the people that were uh, maintaining these planes. They took it very seriously. I mean, they, you know, they were joking when they said, don't grab onto this cable, but um, there was a real sense of pride and pres preservation of these planes and making sure everything was meticulously um, taken care of. So we'll have to see what happens, but I think that's a federal issue as far as what planes are allowed to be flown and what are not. Um, it is really a sad day though, because this just, you know, pristine, piece of history that you can actually experience in a different way. And I hope that the Collins Foundation can continue as they go forward. Would you have reservations about going up and one again? I would not. I would um, put that, check that fear at the door and, and go, because for me it was, um, you know, really an experience of a lifetime. And they also do some wonderful things. Veterans were given rides if they wanted to go to Quonset Point because they were going to Quonset Point, they would give veterans a ride. And I, I think it's something that we need to take, obviously, very seriously. This is one of the worst tragedies we've had, but I think we need to wait for the investigation to, to come to a conclusion. In your judgment, how do you think the state did in terms of its emergency response to this? I think they did very well, and, and I think that, um, you know, one of my friends who works in that area is a paramedic, and he sent me a picture immediately. Um, and it's it's a little, um, it's shocking to think that you were just there, uh, you know, a week ago on this plane that, you know, there go by the grace of God, that could be somebody, that, your family or yourself. Um, and I think that the response was great. I thought the governor did a very good job um, telling people what was happening and asking them to pray for the families and, and recognizing that there are family members that are um, in a position that all of us would hope to never be in at any point in time and that we should, um, you know, make sure that we keep their privacy in check and, and think about how this investigation goes. Our first responders did a great job um, and, you know, closing the airport was probably the absolute correct move and, um, you know, this has been all over the world. I've looked at the British Mail and it's actually in the news there too. So the whole world is mourning for this tragedy. A very sad and grim story. Senator Heather Summers, we thank you so much for being on the program thank today. Thank you for having me. In a moment, Triple E, the threat to cities and towns. And you can watch past editions of Face the State on our YouTube channel or the Channel 3 app.